So, by default, this has become the number one channel on YouTube for all your Uber coverage. Yes, that's right. Screw you, 4chan and spacebattles.com. The Lobster Magnet YouTube channel is the definitive, authoritative source for all your catalyst-powered alternate history needs and analysis. Uber scribe Kyrian Gillian even graced the comments section on my most recent review. That's how you know we're in the big time. Sure, thousands of people love cosplaying as the Wicked and the Divine, and hundreds of thousands enjoyed his run on Darth Vader and various other Marvel comics, but this YouTube channel is the only place crazy enough to spend 20 minutes gushing about the one comic that nobody else seems to talk about enough. And I am forever grateful to all you fine folks who have been following along with me, or who I've introduced to the series. So, as a super special treat, I've done another one of my dramatic reenactments for your viewing pleasure of the absolutely crowd-pleasing scene from Issue 7 of Uber Invasion. For all of you who know what's coming, sit back and enjoy. For those of you who don't, a small bit of context. So the Nazis have invaded America with the full brunt of their superhuman forces, including two out of the three main battleships. They've completely obliterated Boston, New York, and even the White House itself. The U.S. Army has sent the bulk of their enhanced human forces in an attempt to recapitulate the damage dealt and take out one of the German battleships. Sadly, their efforts were thwarted as the second battleship managed to regroup and largely obliterate them leaving America completely defenseless from the Nazi onslaught. With the East Coast devastated, now the Nazis have marched across the country and made their way to Detroit. The West Coast industrial base still outpaces anything that Axis is capable of producing, but if America loses that, then the Nazis have a chance of winning the war. Luckily, Alan Turing has finally uncovered a new Uber type never before seen in combat. On the eve of what could be the fatal turning point of the war, this new type of human weapon finally makes its debut. The engagement of American forces was designed to be, by all appearances, a serious attempt at conventional attack. The proximity to Detroit allowed a considerable mechanized force to be amassed and deployed. As such, engaging tank columns which were supported from the air proved to be a problematic tactical situation for the Germans. That was their priority. All other elements would be secondary. However, it was believed that the indirect bombardment would eventually be countered. It could only be a matter of time. Due to being deployed to neutralize the artillery, Battleship Secret was separated from his support staff. This was entirely as planned. It was interesting to speculate the counterfactuals based around the engagement between the Colossus II and Siegfried. Is there any scenario where an unfinished battleship could, with a first strike, potentially disable a fully developed one? We will never know. All we can be certain of is that it did not happen here. Colossus II's retreat to the west was made to the best of his abilities. Siegfried's physical capabilities were distinctly higher, however, and he was swiftly able to close the gap. Could Siegfried have destroyed Colossus there instantly? It seems likely. Instead, Siegfried chose to engage in melee, extending the period of combat. Some have argued this is a matter of efficiency. Halo effects are far more fatiguing to an enhanced human, so if there was no need for speed, a melee assault should be deployed as a matter of course. Those who have studied Siegfried's personality closely tend to believe the efficiency was not his primary concern. Either way, the decision was a mistake. The initial five enhanced humans had finished their maturation the previous morning and were equipped according to the early experimental weapons. These units were codenamed Zephyr. They consisted of five African-American soldiers, George Baker, Charles Rivers, Reuben Fox, Willie Thomas, and John Watson. To deploy them to their best advantage, Battleship Colossus was to act as a lure to isolate Siegfried. This would maximize the time available to attempt what was thought to be impossible. Even with their abilities, every second would count. It was found that while activated, no actual speech was possible for a Zephyr. Rivers coordinated the initial attack based on simple hand signals. At this time, it was impossible to ascertain whether the Zephyr's abilities were some manner of increased speed or limited control over temporality or both. But this ability replaced both the strength and the halo effects. As such, they were physically incapable of harming a battleship. Equipped with diamond edge blades that extended out of their localized fields, it was hoped that they would be able to create some manner of friction damage against the skin. This proved to be true. Clearly, individually, the impact would be insignificant. But time was on their side. Battleship Colossus had been available for initial testing with Zephyr's abilities. It was found that they could create a small cut on him, but 
were aware that doing so to a fully activated battleship would be entirely different. Colossus was under orders to disengage from combat. Even if the Zephyr became in need of assistance, it was possible that the second German battleship could have engaged at any moment. It was not worth the risk. Colossus followed the order to the letter, retreating from the field, with Siegfried moving to a more exposed position. The Zephyr moved on to theoretically softer targets in the hope that they could be equally vulnerable. This also proved to be a viable tactic. However, while the effect of an injury to the eye in a Panzermensch had been studied, the distortion of a battleship eye had not. In a Panzermensch, halo activation while the eye was disrupted led to a considerable explosion. It was uncertain whether this would be true for a battleship. It was, and one proportionate with the difference in power between a Panzermensch and a battleship. Baker, who performed the strike, was believed to have been atomized in that instant. Fox, preparing his run, was too close, and the detonation disrupted his movement, leading him to fall. That a leg was disabled was a major piece of evidence to support the theories that Zephyr's powers were based on speed rather than temporal control. There was considerable self-inflicted harm to Battleship Siegfried. Battleship physiology was rarely studied in this period, due to their rarity and the difficulties in surgical examination. However, the extreme blood pressure was known. Arteries, especially major arteries, could project blood some hundreds of feet. This blood flow intensity led to major blood loss before it was able to coagulate, especially as the coagulating agent was often too weak to resist the power of the flow. As such, bleeding secret out slowly seemed a viable tactic. However, as Thomas tried to assist Fox in escaping the area, the situation became more complicated. Siegfried was not truly defenseless. It was theorized that the halo effect is not a projectile weapon. It was believed that it instantly creates an areas of distortion in an area and a wide area in the case of a battleship. Thomas and the injured Fox, having dropped speed, were instantly targeted and incapable of escaping. However, Watson's fate, who was in the area and who had not dropped speed, is still a matter of some speculation. If he was not caught in the initial blast, it is believed he would have tried to navigate the dense field of distortion bubbles. We can only assume he failed. As Siegfried had been out of contact for 60 seconds, Battleship Siegmund was sent to locate him. Visual contact made with Siegfried. He's... he's... God, help! Help me! Siegfried is... I'm not sure. He's being taken apart. They say pull back. We may play counterfactuals based around the deployment of Sigmund into this engagement, especially at the point where only a single Zephyr remained active. It is possible that Sigmund could have made a difference. Some believe this would have been the case even if deployed against a full Zephyr wing. However, the majority of these counterfactuals are based upon the use of tactics which were only possible with the information gathered by Sigmund at this point. As such, they are beneath our concern. For Siegfried, this was the last chance of respite. The battleship had been left to his fate. Due to the considerable healing abilities and resilience of the battleship, the remaining Zephyr was required to remain active in order to prevent the wounds from closing. Rivers had to perform this task alone. Soon his own equipment was exhausted, the diamonds ground away. By scavenging blades from the dead Zephyr, Rivers managed to maintain his lonely assault. However, the Zephyr, for all their incredible tactical use, were also limited. Most enhanced humans could act for 8 hours at full power, safely. While the subjective experience was more akin to two weeks, a Zephyr's operating ceiling was estimated at two minutes. The fatality from overexhaustion was predictable, occurring at 1640. All of the flight of the Zephyr received a Distinguished Service Cross. No African American soldier received a Medal of Honor during the war. Still, amongst General Grove's papers from this period, the following was found. Thank God above for Charles Rivers. Battleship Siegmund, first Nazi battleship fatality. Hope you enjoyed that as much as I did making it. Until the HBO Uber series that will probably never exist happens, this is the next best thing you can hope for. So of course, if you haven't already, go read Uber and catch up on the first part and Uber Invasion through my amazingly convenient Amazon affiliate links in the description below. But before you head off, now that you see my carefully crafted mature version, here's another quick thing I made. While less sophisticated, I still find it very cathartic. Yeah, fuck you, Siegfried! Die, you Nazi scum! That's for the Russian prisoners of war. The first US enhanced army. In Boston, in New York, you Nazi piece of shit. Yeah, fuck you, Siegfried. Die, Siegfried. Die, Siegfried. Die, Siegfried. Die, Siegfried.